All right, good morning traders and uh, welcome to the Bookmap Advanced uh, Education and Webinar here today with Scott Pulsini, Futures Trader. He will be trading live. It is in demo paper trading mode, just so you guys know. It's not a trade copy or service here. It is to learn uh, from uh, professional traders, uh, their way of reading order flow, their setups, uh, how they manage their risk. So uh, let's go through the risk disclosure. You guys know who Scott is. If you don't, uh, there's all sorts of stuff I'm sure you can find online. Uh, and uh, I will uh, copy and paste his contact information into the chat for you. Let's go through the disclosures and turn it right over to Scott. Uh, the general disclosure, uh, just so you guys have to know uh, what you're getting involved with in here uh, and uh, uh, some of these disclosures. Uh, all bookmap limited materials, information, and presentations are for educational purposes only and should not be considered specific investment advice nor recommendations. Live trading is in simulation, demo, paper trading mode, and strictly for educational purposes. Live trading executed in simulation cannot accurately represent realistic trading performance. The risk disclosure. Trading futures, equities, and digital currencies involves substantial risk of loss and is not suitable for all investors. An investor could potentially lose all or more than the initial investment. Risk capital is money that can be lost without jeopardizing one's financial security nor lifestyle. Only risk capital should be used for trading and only those with sufficient risk capital should consider trading. Past performance is not necessarily indicative of future results. All right, so with that said, Scott, are you in here? Try to turn it over can to Scott. There you are. All right, so uh, let's see. Uh, you can start uh, presenting your screen. And then I'm going to rebroadcast it. See my screen? Yes. Hold on a minute, everybody, and I'll get it up here. And I'll restream it as well. All right, all set. Alrighty. I'm going to try to mute this channel so I don't hear people coming in and out and it's not working. So I, I muted it on <coughs> advanced, or wait, at, hmm. on the advanced webinar uh -huh. at the top, right? Yeah. So I have <coughs> the option to mute and it says. I'm, it's muted and I'm still hearing everything. But when, if I come down to the this actual voice channel, it doesn't give me any option to mute it. Uh, say, yeah, I mean, yeah, I hear the, the like this kind of, of yeah, I hear people like leaving this kind of the dunk. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, right. Yeah, yeah, we can hear it as well. Uh, I'm not sure, uh, Scott. Um, let me see if there's settings in here somehow. Usually, you click on the. You, know, you right click and it says mute. It, it work. It says mute for advanced webinar, pound advanced webinar. And that's muted. So the whole thing should be muted. All these advanced webinars, but and it doesn't give me that option on the advanced webinar with the little speaker next to it. So I don't know if I click on it, it doesn't do anything. Uh, let's see. Not sure, not sure. Um, let's see uh, if I can find something else, or if anyone has any idea in here how to uh, how to do that. Yeah, I, I don't know, right. Scott. I don't know. I'll keep I'll keep looking, and I'll in, I'll interrupt you if I can find something. Though I'll I'll, I'll be searching for it. Why don't we get started, and then uh, I'll I'll, uh, I'll let you know. Okay. I guess we'll just have to deal with the in and out. Um, <clears throat> all right. Actually, give me give me one second. I'll be right back. Okay. Thank <laughs> you. 
Okay, so so uh, Scott, if you when you scroll down to the bottom uh, on the left margin of um, uh, Discord, you see you know that your your screen is lit up there, and you have the little phone icon with an X on it. You see that? Mm -hmm. Look to the left yeah. of that. Yeah. Voice or there's suppression there, noise suppression. I don't know if that's going to do the trick or not. Um, I don't even see that. I just there see should be connected. like a little a little like a like. A bunch of lines like in kind of a diamond shape do you see that no i mean i see the nothing happens um, yeah I it, it looks like uh it won't work anyway this is this is like if you clap your hands or it said when you're speaking your friends will hear nothing but you you speaking uh so never mind um yeah i don't know every week it's been fine and now all of a sudden it doesn't huh. keep changes unless this card all right um whatever so we'll figure it out we'll have to deal with it i guess uh so i was i just tried a short here in es uh sure first time so as you guys know we're using lugs uh L ludwig levels these are um, like basically the core the book my volume is the core of my trading but i'm using these um they're very 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 powerful she has a bunch of metrics she's been around for like 12 years but they're based on from what i can tell again it's proprietary but you know market profile and pivots and whatever she's using but they're absolutely incredible for support and resistance for targets for um and that's how i was using them originally and then you know last very recently i started and went back and i watched the webinar i did with her it was basically for her to just educate me um, I put that in the room a few times. If you guys need it, I can try to post it again. But um, there's a whole other level to using these and, you know, what happens, what doesn't happen, what the expectation is for something to happen. And when it doesn't happen, then you're ready to, to you know, go the other way. So, for instance, like, you know, when you get above the yellow directional line, expectation is to tag the red. If that doesn't happen, uh, again, this is just using level with levels, not the volume. If that doesn't happen, then you expect it to you know, at least come down to the yellow. If it gets below the yellow, then you're expecting blue, right? But things change all the time. And if you're just using level with levels, it's like, okay, yeah, I expected it to get to here, but where do I go short, right? It's like, do I just top in a short here or here? And you're, you know, you always give the benefit of the doubt that it could still come and tag it. So that is the beauty of using these with the with the volume, because if you, you know, if you already know, okay, it didn't tag here, and, I'll, and then you get a, a bearish volume set up, then you know, hey, you have this information on what didn't happen. Now you get your volume set up and it's go time, at least to the yellow and then possibly the blue, right? So that's why using the two in conjunction is literally the most powerful edge I have ever seen in futures trading. So um, again, I, I haven't been doing this thing justice, but I am now. So anyway, um, so, you know, we got below the yellow expectations, of the blue, for some reason, if we start getting bullish setups, well, that's telling you something's up and we'll probably come back and hit tag the yellow or the red just kind of like we did here right this should have tagged here no um i'm sure there's some kind of setup here overnight but no and then we came down here so i was just currently short so any any setups i get volume setups i show you i'm taking aggressively short below the yellow anything above the yellow long i'll take aggressively otherwise i wait for so for instance say we get a bullish setup right now uh, and i'm drawing these on this chart um, obviously it's on book map but so if I get a bullish setup, I need to see a full ATR move away, five minute ATR, a retest, a failure, and I get in three quarters in ATR. If I see a bearish setup, I'm in immediately three quarters in ATR. I don't have to wait for a retest of the zone because again, I want to be aggressive below the yellow, yellow look. So that being said, I was looking to be short aggressively. And in the open, there was a ton of stuff firing off um, <clears throat> in all these markets. And we'll go over all of them here shortly. But so you let's see, let's just open here we had buy ice we had this zone here first this uh, light blue zone and we moved higher and then we had this zone here uh, and i was again i was looking to short aggressively so we did not get a if we would have got a full atr above the second zone that's the start blue zone so the first zone was this this happened later so don't pay attention to that right now this was the first zone by ice. I was watching that and we got above there and that was bullish. I'm like, okay, well then if we get, you know, retest, retest failure, I'll go long. And then more ice came in. You can see right here by ice. 
that was about 800-ish, and that was this set up here. So then I was watching this, and if this went full ATR retest failure, I was going to go long. Instead, it didn't get a full ATR, and it got back below here. So remember, I'm looking to short aggressively three quarters in ATR. So it got three quarters in ATR below here. Actually, three quarters was right around here, but I didn't want to short right in the middle of this zone, so I just moved it below. Gold stocks TC. 184 contracts below this uh, prior zone and below the spot gamma level so i shorted it just maybe it was about a point more so i shorted it there and then what happened was as it moved down we got a brand new setup right here that's this this was 1200 buy ice so when that happens i can trail my stop based on the new setup and or add so i was looking to add i still think we're coming down here because you can see this liquidity we'll go over that but if this would have held if this buy ice would have come in and it couldn't push it higher, then I was going to short aggressively below this too. But what it allowed me to do with the new setup is trail my stop three quarters in ATR above the newest zone. So all I did, all I was risking on this trade at that point. So before this came in, I was basically risking, you can see where my stop was. I got in here and I was risking all the way up to here because of this setup. Once this came in, I was it allowed me to trail my stop all the way down here three quarters in ATR above this zone. So I basically scratched the trade um, with the opportunity to possibly catch a huge winner, right? So that's, that is the beauty of the setups. You can trail your stop based on market structure and volume coming in, not because you don't want to lose money, right? Well, I'm not going to go on that route right now. I'll probably do it at some point today, but trail your stops based on something relevant to the market, not relevant to your P&L. You shouldn't even have this P&L up. You should be trading without your P&L. Set it up with your broker where if you're having a bad day, you automatically get shut off and set a preset limit. That is the number one thing you should be doing because if you think that you can control yourself when you start to get, especially most traders are very, very, very um, competitive, right? And it's one thing to talk about, oh yeah, you know, if I go down this much, I'm gonna shut, shut my screen off. When you go down and you feel like you're being wronged and you know your competitive nature, trust me, please trust me, it's cost me millions of dollars. You are not gonna many times make the right decision in the heat of the moment as far as I'm done. You're gonna be like, screw that, I'm getting my money back, right? And then all of a sudden you have a horrible day where you lose you know, 20, 30% of your, or more of your trading account. So what you should do first and foremost, we've talked about this many times, is set up a, a drop dead stop limit um, with your brokerage, where if you hit a certain amount, certain percentage, whatever you come up with, you should, you should never lose more than five percent of your five or six percent of your account value in a day. It automatically he shuts you off, right? This is exactly what happens to trading firm. That's why trading firms have risk managers. So when guys go on tilt, they call it going on tilt. When you're not you're not right in the head, and you're not making right decisions, and you're getting killed, they cut you off. Well, make your broker cut you off. And if you, again, if you think you can do it on your own, there are very, very few guys, including me. I mean, I'm much better now, but you know, very few guys that can just shut it off when they're, when they're losing, because again, that competitive nature comes out. So that rants out of the way. Um, so we're just bouncing in between these zones. Nothing new has come in here. So um, I'm probably gonna, as soon as something new comes in, I'll delete these zones because we've basically tried, well, yeah, we've, we've, we've the only one we haven't got an ATR below is this one. So technically, actually, I missed this trade here. Gold stops TC, 300 contracts. So I'm going to just delete these now because we definitely moved. At least I'm going to delete this one. So what? why I should have been long, again, we've had a lot going on here to start this day, but here was your setup. This is where I stopped out three quarters of an ATR, right? Well, what happened here? I'm willing to take longs below the yellow lug as long as we go full ATR retest. Well, look what happened. Of course, they're always perfect, by the way, if I miss them. They are at, look at this. This is full ATR. Here's your retest. Perfect retest to the top of the zone. I should have been in three quarters in ATR, so I should be long right now. Ten points and counting. But, of course, I missed the trade. But it is what it is. It's a, lear it's a learning experience for you guys. I should have been long this setup. I'm going to delete this, too, because this is now traded an ATR below there, too. So this was the main zone, and you can see, like, things change, right? I was ready to go short. I was short. This happened, I got out, what I should have done is gone long. So this is gonna suck while I watch this rip off 50 points, but. Old ice PC, 161 hey. contracts. Um, Old Stocks PC, 433 Goodness contracts. Goodness gracious. Go ahead, bro, sorry. Oh, sorry, uh, just uh, what might be helpful, um, is uh, I can show you how to use the notes column uh, and you can have an alert 
uh, come in for the notes column uh, at a specific price level. Maybe that'll help you, but uh, I, I can help you offline on that, Scott. Okay. And if it slows down, you can show me and then other people will learn too. Okay. You'd think I'd know after three years how to use that stuff, but I guess not. Um, all right. So gold, it's going a little nuts here. We had huge stop runs to the downside. We had, you can see here almost 700 right here. That's this yellow zone. And then another, actually, I forgot to color this. Hold on. So it's not confusing. Oh, and thanks, guys, uh, uh, for the help there in the chat room. Uh, Scott, you shouldn't hear that anymore. I think we got it. Yeah, I don't. That's cool. What did you do? Oh, there's a setting in there uh, that uh, uh, these guys <laughs> had both Nate and uh, uh, Rambo, uh, Rambo knew. I did not know. A setting that I don't have to turn on, though? No, no, I got it for the channel. You shouldn't oh, okay. hear it. You shouldn't hear it now. I haven't heard anything, so it works. Okay. Um, so again, we had huge stop run here. Right? Sell stops. That was seven hundred. We had another five hundred here, which is huge. Again, threshold for gold is one fifty, right? So anything over one fifty, I'm drawing zones and trading off of. This was seven hundred. This was five hundred. So what happened here, right? So this is the beauty of the volume. The volume, again, for the 1,000th time is the most important thing that you can use in your trading, right? If you're not using volume, you don't have all the information. I don't care how great of a technical guy you are, you don't have all the information. So, you know, you're watching this move here and you're like, yeah, we're breaking down out of this balance. I, you know, I know this is, we'll go over this probably a little bit, but this market is in trouble, right? It, it is kind of just balancing here, but this was major balance, multi-month, right try to break out failed and if this thing is going to stay bullish it needs to hold this high volume node kind of like it did here we went right through it and now we're kind of just building balance below here so this thing is going to do this and what i kid with my room is too um every every time if you watch fox news channel every time they come out with this gold commercial buy gold and buy silver i swear to you every time that commercial errors the next day the market gets crushed so use that as your indicator so that's another indicator because it's been hearing a lot later lately that we're going to do this but anyway um so you're you know you're trading technical stuff you're like yeah breakdown from balance man i'm in yes and we just now we're doing this and you're just sitting there like holding the bag like what happened i thought well this is what happened we had stop run that one held. This one was a major dumb and dumber. What's a dumb and dumber? A puke, usually retail puke, and there was no follow through. Big, the big money did not continue to push it down. Rejection, you're short, you're holding the bag, wondering why the trading gods hate you. If you're using volume, you one, I didn't even get in this trade. I was going to potentially short this, and then this happened, and I'm like, okay, well, if we get a three quarters of an ATR below here, I'll short this, and we never did. And then we did this. So technically right now, what I'm looking for is a retest. This is, what, this is the exact trade I just missed in the ES. Here's your, actually we have new, I take that back, we have new uh, volume. So let's, uh, let's see what's going on here. So I would have, like the ES, say, say this didn't come in right now when I was just talking a little bit ago, right? I'm watching this zone. I would have waited for a full ATR because we're below the yellow log. I'll show you that in a second. A retest fail, I would have gone long. Something new came in, so now we default to the newest volume set right so and you could tell it was it was right back in these zones too so this was 320 this zone actually captures that perfectly then you had another 500 the other way so whoever just loaded up whoever just jumped on those stop runs and loaded up short they just puked them out the other way right and you can see all this with book map that's the that's the key so let me uh that gas ng 175 contracts we may look at ng today too because this it's been nutty huge huge moves all right so that's that stop zone right you actually had 161 so this is what is 161 sell ice stop, stop by and q 154 contracts this is going to this misty s trade is going to hurt but i just say it's going to go 50 points without me there you go here we go i should have been in down here that's already 30 points 25 points all right so anyway let's get this drawn and i'll head over to Actually, this is just balancing in the zone, so let's draw the NASDAQ real quick so we can possibly put a trade on here. All right, so you can see here, huge stops. Not huge, but big. But my threshold's 150 in here, so 271. We want to mark up. 
So all you do, people always are confused on how I draw the zones, right? It's, it's, it's very technical. Not. Nah, you come over here, crosshair, figure out where it's spiked, look at the bubbles where it's spiked, that's right where it's spiked, and make sure you incorporate all the bubbles until it dissipated, right? And that's your zone. That's all you do. And I try to be consistent with the coloring just so people know what it is, and including me. So I try to use yellow for stops, but if we get back-to-back -back stop runs, I'll go white on the second one like I guess saw in the go. So that's this. So that's the first step, right? You draw the uh, draw the volume event. Now I look at my lugs, Ludwig levels. What's going on? What do I expect? So what do you see here? This is very, very typical. This is what you expect to happen. Like I was telling you earlier, it's about what should happen, what didn't happen. This is exactly what you expect when you draw new lugs. Well, actually, on the downside, you expect you expect this to Prior red to hold, yellow to hold, directional here. Well, what happened? Neither one of those happened. So this is an instance of what didn't happen that should have. So we drew new lugs to the downside, right? You expect prior red to hold, directional to hold. You could bounce around here, and then you expect that. Well, what happened? They didn't hold, and now we're above prior red. That's bullish. This is your target, right? So you're, I'm looking long, and I'm looking long aggressively with this as my target, unless something else comes in volume-wise that, that turns that theory or thesis around, right, on its back. So right now, we have the volume of that. I know I want to be long. Then we go to the ATR, the sweet 41 points, right back to, I mean, I'm not complaining because the trade has been horrible the last three days as far as volume and stuff. Um, it's been, the relative volume has been pathetic. It's been like half, um, and that's why it's been so choppy. So anyway, so then come over here. What did I say? 40, 40 no, it's 41.23. So it, it took me about a month, to, more than a month. I used to use my calculator. Then I came up with this really high tech thing on this spreadsheet where you put in, put in the uh, ATR and it tells you 75%. I know how, how high tech that is. Trust me, for me, it's high tech. Remember, I'm, I'm turning 50 in a couple of weeks, so I'm not that high tech. Anyway, 31 points is three quarters in ATR. So what does that mean? That means 31 points above this zone, I will go long this trade, right? Because we want, we know, based on the lugs and everything I just talked about, that I want to be aggressively long. So that is three quarters in ATR. You know, if I was being conservative, so say we were below the yellow lug, I would wait for a full ATR, so 41 points, retest failure. This one, I'm going aggressive right out of here. So 31 points. One second. So we're at 22.50, so that's 53.50, where I will go long. I don't really like going long through this. I can see this liquidity. I mean, first of all, you know we're going to take this liquidity. So, you know, we see that we've seen this so like three days in a row in my room. It actually didn't happen yesterday. What's going on here? Oh, by the way, this p and was from uh, right at the close yesterday into the earnings. There was a huge stop run, and I got short, and it obviously worked out. All right, no, here we go. All right, so 53.50, I right, will go long. So we talk about this all the time, right? This is how I trade these zones. This is, again, the science. There is no disputing that was a 300 plus stop run. There's no disputing there were 752 total sweeps here. So you had the stops plus somebody else was buying the sweeps, right? So again, you see the huge blue bubbles, those are the market orders. The black dots are resting orders that were, I use black for sell, so that, that means they, these were offers in the order book that got swept. So somebody just bought a ton of them, half of them were buy stops, the other half were um, uh, natural gas numbers coming out here in five minutes, but uh, the other half were someone sweeping the books. So that was the volume event. Oh, but what I was saying is that's the science. The way you trade these zones, you can come up with your own with your own theories on how you want to. You, you may say, "Hey, I like that. You know what? I'm going to buy one right here. I see this liquidity up here. I'm going to buy one here. I'm going to risk, you know, an ATR below here. That's fine. Trade it. Trade these zones how you want to trade them. This is how I trade them after watching thousands of them over two years. This is what I've come up as, with as the best method. But you know, when volatility gets really high, you know, you're risking right here. So you're getting in 31 points above the zone. Then you got to risk 31 points below the zone plus the size of the zones. You're talking, 
62 ticks just with this, and then you add in this, this is another, so you're looking at a 90 tick risk trade. You know, it is what it is. The volatility is extremely high. A two, 300 point move out of here would not be surprising at all. And it happens all the time. You guys saw last week, we caught a 200 point move to the downside. Watch the, go back and watch a YouTube video from last week. So I'm willing to risk that because I know the volatility. I have to, I have to risk that kind of, you know, um, that kind of distance away from these zones because that's what the ATR is, average true range. So, you know, it's not that, you know, I want to risk that. But my point is, if you say, you know, I want to be aggressive, I'm going to buy one right here and just, I don't, maybe if I come up here, I'll add, but I'll get in right here. And that, you could do that too. Again, come, the more you watch us, the more you practice, you can come up with your own method, methods. This is just the best way that I have, I have uh, determined to trade these zones. So anyway, we will get long there. The only way I won't get long is if this trades a full ATR below here, that's going to invalidate that as a long setup. And then what I'll do is look for a short, right? Because that'll be a full ATR or retest and fail that I'll go short. So I'll have aggressive to the upside on longs, three quarters in ATR because we're above the yellow lug. I will still go short if we go a full ATR because the point is, in retest fail, the point is you shouldn't be seeing bearish setups now. You, this should go straight to the red lug. If you start seeing bearish setups, there's something up, right? And you're ready to pivot and trade the other way. So again, we are here. We're above the, why is that that color? <clears throat> We're above the yellow lug. You should not be seeing bearish setups. You should see bullish setup, bullish setup, and we should tag that. If you see a bearish setup, something's up, and then I will look for a full right TR retest fail, and I'll go short with my expectation to get expectation to get below the yellow lug and eventually tag the uh, the blue. <clears throat> so we will let that simmer, see what happens there. I really hope it come back down because I'm already stewing that I am not long this contract, which I should be. But again, the main thing you want to notice here, it's just slapping you in the face, right? What do you see? That is resting liquidity that's been in there forever. That is a magnet. It is not, wow, look at look at all these huge, these huge bids down here. And they're not even huge. I mean, they're relatively huge to what's in the book. That's why you don't look at this. You look at this and showing you, you know, a, a different view of things. And that's, that's, a, that's a lot of liquidity right now. So again, a newbie would look at this and be like, yeah, I want to get long, man. These guys are willing to support this market down here. It's the exact opposite. The longer you see the liquidity, like this liquidity, I don't pay attention to. Why? Because they just threw it in. This could be them trying to scare the market or whatever. Liquidity that is, are the magnets is the, is the liquidity that's been in there forever. So my point is, yeah, we could rally. We can come up here, bounce off zero gamma, play games. And by the end of the day, I, the odds are extremely, extremely high we're going to come down and tag this liquidity. So if you have that in the back of your mind, you know, you could still go long and play longs, but the minute you start seeing short, short setups, and the minute we get back, we're still below the yellow, but the minute you start seeing short setups, you're like, okay, I'm ready. I know there's bands of liquidity down here. You know, you see a short setup, you can be aggressive, and this is where we're going. Right? I'm not saying it's happening right now. We can come up here. We can tag this. We can even do one of these. Point is, when you know when the, where the liquidity is, that is such a huge edge. We will get there eventually. Soybean ice right. for by ZS. 119 contracts. All right, so I missed a trade. Soybean ice for by ZS. 100 contracts. I missed a trade here. Multiple. Two. Iceberg by contracts. Look at this ice coming in here in soybeans. Threshold's like 150, 200. This is, oh, it's still coming in. So this is the trade I missed. I actually marked this up. I was going to put this trade on. Of course, I got distracted. Yeah, buy ice, the open. Here's your ATR. Here's your retest. Here's your failure. Gone. Over and over. I don't care what futures market you're trading, guys. This is why you want to have multiple futures markets that you're watching. So when one sucks, you can move to another one. So this this setup was obviously down here, right? I would have been, I wouldn't have been aggressive on the buy side. Actually, this was up here where this happened. But I would have traded the retest. Here is that ice. Here is the move away. Here is your retest. Stop by NQ. I would have got one. 150 right contract. Right, let's go back to NQ. I think I'm filled there. Hold on. Pretty close. All right, but what's going on here now? This is a brand new event, right? 
So I will, I'll let this fill based on this, but what I can do is once I fill in this, I can place my stop based on the newest event, right? It's a little more risky because again, this is a new event. If you wanna be really conservative, right? You wait for this to, tra to trade three quarters in ATR out of this event, right? Let's get this different color. So this is a riskier trade because I'm willing to get, I'm still willing to go long three quarters in ATR out of this yellow, the first stop run setup. A brand new event came in. So what I actually should do if I follow my rules and I, I won't this time and I'll probably get smoked on it because every time I break my rules, I get crushed is I should move this three quarters in ATR above this newest event, right? But we'll just put that out if it comes back up. So what's going on here though? Remember what I said, this thing looks extremely bullish by lug standards. Why, what's going on here? We're about to put in a bearish setup here, right? So again, this is 26 quarter. ATR is 42.3, say 42 and a half points. So if this gets 42 and a half points below the zone, that's a full ATR. And then I'm looking at this zone here, and I'm looking retest to short, right? Because look, if there's real buyers in this market, you, you don't think the big money sees exactly what you're seeing. You know, they have developers that are using the CME MBO data as well. If they're a firm, they absolutely do. You don't think they see that? If they wanted to buy, they can just pile in on top of that and then just rip this thing. Well, where were they? How come there were no real buyers right there? That's what you gotta be asking yourself right now. Now, we just got a full ATR below there, right? That's 45 points, more than 45 points. Something's up. Why did that happen? Don't know, don't care, but it did. Now what I'm gonna do, I'm really glad I didn't get filled on this because I'd be complaining the rest of this webinar because like I just said, I shouldn't even put that on right there because of the new event. So now, here's your ATR. I'm looking for a retest, then a failure, three quarters in ATR, I will go short. Stop will go three quarters in ATR above there, right? So again, things change very quickly in these markets. You come up with your thesis, you come up with your expectation. If something different happens, you're like, wait a minute, that that shouldn't happen. Okay, well, here's your volume. Now you can trade off of it. Like I said, I was aggressive above the yellow up. Any, any setups I wanted to get long, that is a target. Well, what just happened there? We had a stop run, buy stop run, where was paper to push this thing? Failed. So now I'm waiting for a retest failure. I will go short. That'll be one of my targets. And then my main targets are here and down here. I'm willing to, you see how quickly like I'm, I'm changing my thesis? And remember, overall, it hasn't, we haven't seen anything in ES yet, but we know that liquidity is below in ES. Let's see if there's any liquidity below here. Mm, yeah, I mean, that's not, I usually would say, yeah, that's kind of far away. We might not get there today. This is like a, this is like a sneeze in this market lately couple hundred points is nothing. So that's interesting too. It's not as, it's not as heavy as, uh, oh yeah, I take that back. Okay, so look, now look at the difference here. What do you see above? Black hole, basically, I mean, this is liquidity, but it's nothing compared to this. What do you see below? Huge liquidity that's been in there forever, right? Again, I restarted my book map right at the open here, but it's obviously been in here at least since the open, right? That is, you guys have no idea what an edge that is just to know that, right? So you're like, okay, well, we got a bearish setup. We should have been nothing but bullish. Now, and there's huge liquidity below. I can't wait to short this thing on a retest failure, right? And that's trade. So what I'm going to do, um, I'm just going to delete. No, no, I'll leave that in. Let's see. So because I want to make sure when if this retests, which probably 80% of the time it retests the zone, this retest fails, I just want to make sure I get in. Like if three quarters is an ATR, let's figure this out. Three quarters an ATR is with my handy dandy high tech uh, 41.69, 41.69. One and a quarter points. So the bottom of the zone, again, we're looking at this white zone, or whatever beige zone, whatever color that is is at 26 so 30 points is 96 
94, 94 and a half, we'll say 94 and three quarters. So that would it put me just below the zone, and that's what I wanted to make sure of, right? Say the ATR would put me like right here. Well, I don't want to, I don't want to short right in all the zones or a spot gamma level. But actually, this three quarters in the ATR puts me right. What I'll do is I'll go right below the spot gamma, so I'll risk another four points, and this is where I'll go short if we do this. And then my stop will go 31 points above the top of the zone, right? So that's still going to be if I if I'm getting in say 90, all the way up to. 30, 31 points above this zone puts me around 76-ish, right? So that that's like an 80 tick risk, right? So one, I can only trade a one lot, right? But you're, you're adjusting the volatility. It is what it is. I don't want to risk 90 points, but the ATR and the volatility is telling me I have to because if I'm, you know, respecting these zones, these volume events, then this is what we talk about all the time. I'm trying not to go on a rant on this. But, you know, traders will say, okay, like you guys are watching me right now, I guarantee some of you do this, even with me telling you not to do it. You'll watch this, you'll wait for the retest, you're all patient, you'll get short, you'll wait for this, and then you'll put your stop right there. Because you don't want to risk more than 10 points or 20 points. The market does not care what you want to risk. This is what the market cares about, this volume event. That's why you want to get outside of it, right? Please, 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 please don't trail your stops based on what you want to win or make or, or lose. It makes no sense. The market doesn't care. The market cares about volume events. Put your stop in a meaningful level. If you don't like that, then, you know, the other most powerful thing that we've been talking about today are the lugs, right? So, you know, in this instance, there's really nothing here, but say there was like a lug here, like a, a baby lug, we call them, right? Say it was like down here. If you want to put it just like a ATR above that, once you get short, fine. I'm fine with that. But have a reason. Your P&L is not a reason. That is, the, I, last week I went on a rant about it too. The biggest mistake retail traders make are the trailing stops. I'm going to trail my stop to break even. For what reason? Because you want to get stopped out? Because you're going to get stopped out most of the time. Please put your stops based on something important. You may have something else that you look at that's important. VWAP, standard deviation of VWAP. I don't care. Just don't do it based on your P&L. That's all I'm asking you. All right, so we're trying to retest the zone again 80 percent of the time so listen sometimes this thing just goes and you're like damn i wanted to short this and you know you've got you've got to decide how you're going to trade these you may say every time out of here aggressively i'm, I'm getting short i don't care or, or long i'm not going to wait for retest failure right but it's just way better better odds if it retests and if it fails than just trying to hop in and then watching that right so all right that's a lot of talking any questions bruce um yes uh so uh l trading is asking so when you when you enter you are risking 1.5 atr per entry uh seven point uh atr well, away from the easy. event uh at entry and 0.75 atr above below the event do you have it right uh or does Correct. he have it right okay uh and if the yeah. risk gets reduced uh if new volume events are created in direction of your trade uh i guess uh and re yeah and then re yeah then reduce the risk uh if the volume events created a direction right. in your trade. So yeah. if a new event create like you saw in the ants this morning i was able to trail to bring that stop down and basically break even on the trade i lost a little bit right so it's like my original like i showed you guys when i got short i deleted the zone but i originally got short here my stop was way up here because that was where the event was three quarters in atr above there was my stop well when we came down here this was the new event i was able to trail my stop all the way down to three quarters above there and i got stopped out and i should have gone long again and i'd have this much profit but whatever the point is yes when you see a new event that allows you to trail your stop i didn't trail my stop because i wanted to break even or just lose a little bit because if you do that you're going to get stopped out use or use the volume reasons to trail your stops. Sometimes you don't get them, right? Sometimes this comes down and it does this and there's nothing here and nothing happens and then it comes out, okay, that's just trading. I mean, that doesn't happen very often where you won't get a new event, but it does, right? So just, you know, trading is probabilities, period. You know, you're gonna you're gonna have losers. Not, I have losers all, every day I have losers, right? But my winners, when I catch them, they're huge. So it's like most, 
people just cannot grasp that about trading. Like they think they're going to sit down and make money every day, you know, a constant churn of cash. It's just not going to happen. It's make a little, lose a little, make a little, lose a little, make a little more, lose lose a little. You never want to lose more than again on a on an individual trade. You don't want to be losing more than two percent of your account size. Um, on a day, you don't want to be losing more than six percent. And then there's going to be the days where you catch the running trade, and we caught last week. I didn't really add, but you know where you'll cut. You know, say you get long here, and then you get a new event, and you trail your stop, and but you add, and then you get a new event, and you trail your stop for these two trades, and then you get, and then you add, and then you get a new event, and then that day, this day is a huge outsized day, which makes your month or year. That's what you're shooting for. You're, so you're basically trying to tread water until you get that huge trending trade. That's what trading is. If you think if you think you're just gonna scalp all day long and risk two points, and there's it's not gonna happen. Trust me, I used to be the big one of the biggest scalpers on the planet. If I'm not doing it, that should open your eyes to you know what? Maybe that's not a viable way to trade anymore. Euros and it's not. 50, 171 contracts. And it's not because the algos are 80 percent or more of the market. So the, the the days of scalping a couple points, they're done. You're it's over. You may get lucky a few times in a day or a week. You're not going to make money that way, and you're going to churn your account. And you're going to pay four to five dollars a round turn, and you're going to be done. So again, you can learn the hard way, or you can listen to my 23 years of experience. And you know, again, if I'm not doing it, that should tell you something. You think I like putting on trades and watching this nonsense for three hours until I get my target? It, it drives me crazy, right? And I sit there and complain all day long. But you know, if I could was able to trade scalping, I would do it in a heartbeat. Again, I was one of the best in the world at it. So you got to adjust trading changes, right? And that you have to adapt. And back then, I wasn't able to adapt because I didn't have, once this went away, once my scalping went away where the algos took over, you know, there was nothing, I couldn't adapt because I wasn't a computer. There was nothing like bookmap back then. If I would have had bookmap, first of all, I would have made probably 10 times, at least 10 times more than I made when I was killing it. But when it, things started to go south, they would have never gone south because I had all this information that you, you have here. Guys, this is the edge. Like there is no better edge in trading than what you have right here, period. Like I showed my room in December without even the Lubbock levels, because I, I wasn't using them in the right context, I traded for the entire month of December, I traded nothing but volume setups. And I did them conservatively, meaning I waited for a full ATR retest failure. And I think I made like, I think the p was like 12 grand or something, or 10 grand, something like that. I, and I had one bad day where technology, where it froze up and went down and I lost like seven grand on a couple trades because I couldn't get out or whatever. But the point is, it, the piano doesn't matter. My my point is, you can. This is the edge. This is the number one edge. This, this, and knowing and you know, knowing your areas and stuff like that. That that in the volume. This is number one. And then if you want to use Ludwig levels, again, I you know I don't, I do not trade add things into my trading very lightly. Let alone talk about them on webinars. So this is the second strongest edge that I've ever seen. Right. So. And if you don't like these, whatever, I don't know why you wouldn't, but if you don't, that's fine. You have the number one edge right here, right? So use it. In any trader that's not using this, it does not does not have all the information. And if they're a great trader, they'd be 10 times better by using this information. Yeah, right, yeah. I I, I, I'll let you <laughs> catch your breath after that. Um, yeah. uh, but I, I just want to reiterate, I mean, we, we, we've been, you know, uh, talking in the webinars recently about just you can trade any way you want. Uh, whatever time frame it is or whatever because um, the markets are fractal uh, or, or whatever uh, strategy it is and wh wherever you have your levels and you're interested in dealing then look at the order flow uh, around those levels it's it, you know j traders doing the same thing scott's doing the same thing uh, tom is doing the same thing uh, we talk about it in the in the advanced webinars as well uh, so this is where you'll get that edge uh, and you're, you're just saying this I'm, I'm just saying it in a different way uh, uh, Scott so uh, uh, one thing I, I, I really like the way that you were talking about like you have your uh, setups and your rules uh, but then you're you may flip your thesis uh, it will be based on fact though uh, something happened an event happened and then now you're going to think differently uh, because of that event uh, and then you know that's what you call the science part 
uh, and then the art part uh, is when you uh, consider how you want to now uh, enter that and manage it. All right, trading is so much of what should happen and didn't happen, which helps you. So you have a, you know, you you, you come in in the morning and you look at your you look at your charts. You know, you should always be looking at this stuff. This is you know just as important bigger term structure, right? So you're looking at this. Like me just looking at this right now tells me. What happened yesterday, and this is crude. Tried to break out, hold straight back. Okay, and I put this in my room yesterday afternoon. I said, heads up. I said, this is real close to a failed breakout in crude, right? So look, look where we held. We held there and now we're out. So markets, when they break out, they can still pull back to the tops of balance areas. This is a balance area. This is just traders placing bets. Some are short, some are long. When it breaks out, the long, the shorts have to puke. If it breaks out this way, the longs have to puke, right? So what should happen when we break out of balance is when it pulls back, it should never go more than either the top, last line of defense, line in the sand is the high volume note. That's it. If this gets below here, then something's wrong. Again, I'm as a trader, I'm saying, I want to be along this market. I want to be along this market. Even a pull back here, I want to be along this market. That's my thesis. If it gets through here, then I'm like, hmm, okay, well, that's wrong. And then you flip your thesis based on what didn't happen. So, so much of trading is what didn't happen. This should hold and do this, which it's still doing, right? But if this turns around and breaks, you're like, well, that should have done this. Now I'm ready to go short, changing my thesis, looking for short setups and volume, boom, and you catch the huge move. So, you know, trading isn't. This is, this is such a bullish market, I'm gonna buy no matter what. I don't care if this does this and gets below this huge you know, area of committed traders, I'm gonna just keep buying. Yeah, well, you're gonna get killed, right? So that's what I'm saying. Yeah, you have your thesis, I have my thesis right now too. This should hold and rip. But if this turns around and breaks, I'm not thinking that anymore. I'm thinking, okay, well, now I wanna go short. I may even take some losses in the process, that's fine. Because guess what? Once this breaks, you're gonna get a huge move down and I'll make that back what I lost on my on my couple longs time, times four, five or whatever, right? So that's, you gotta be ready to pivot your thesis. And what helps you do that is the volume. Just like I showed you in NASDAQ. That should not, you should not have seen a negative, I, I keep saying negative, bearish event. Right. And I may be stuck here without the trade on. Right. I was waiting for a retest. It didn't get up there. But we talked about all the reasons right when we got on and why I wanted to be a buyer here early on. And then we get a bearish event. Well, that shouldn't happen. So now I'm flipping my I'm flipping my thesis. Right. Now I'm looking for this so I can go short. That's what trading is. And you saw last week. Watch last week. I was short crude, short crude. We came down to the blue log. We got a bullish event. I turned around and flipped it and I went went long. It, it couldn't get below the blue log. I got a bullish event. Uh, until my thesis. we were to get down to That's what trading where is. you see on the ES, you right. see 46, um, 99, 50. This is really upsetting, too. What I'm this looking is for. Really, really upsetting. This is a 20, 20 well, cent trade in soybeans. That what I, I, again, I that's beside the point. Open. You know, I if long as it does. This right before I got on the web, I don't know any, any of those Delta equity stuff, but this was an ATR. Until the ATR it, in there is uh, it's oh, not going to be Looks like it's a little more. Involved with the day. Um, uh, it's 19,300. Right is there, it? It's been to all. Didn't tag it. The next wave up didn't so tag it. Failed that that okay, so I just, just, so I just added that. And see what I'm saying? What was the top of the zone? What price was it? 39. Where do we go to? About 42.50. That's three and a half cents. That's a full ATR. Here's your retest. Here's your failure. Contracts. That would have been long right there, three quarters in ATR. My stop goes three quarters in ATR below here, and I catch a 20 cent move and counting. Then what happened? New volume of that. I could have trailed my stop. That was three quarters in ATR, three quarters in ATR below here, and I could have added. So I would have been added. I now would have two positions on, and this thing is still going higher. So that's upsetting too. But the point is for these webinars for you guys to learn cost me money a lot of times because I'm not able to see everything, but hopefully you can see why I would have been long there. All right. So once again, what do you see here? What's the number one thing you see here? I don't know, this huge band of liquidity right here. I wonder where we're headed. So guys, girls, whoever, these are, this is the big money. The big money gets what they want, period. It doesn't always happen right away, 
they run the market. So you can sit here and complain all day long how manipulated these markets are, and you'd be 100% correct. So do you want to complain or, or do you want to, what's saying, if you can't beat them, join them, right? So complain, that you can't make money because the algos, because it's manipulated, or say, hey, I know what's happening here. They're going to push us right into the liquidity. It's probably going to happen in the next 30 seconds, right? This is such important information to know when we're down here and you're like, okay, wait a second here. You see how long this has been in here? And we're down here and you're like, yeah, I want to be short, but what? That's up there. Oh, I got a bullish signal. Oh, okay. Well, this is my target. Okay. Right, going right there right now. I know it seems far-fetched. Like, there's no way. There's no way, you know, the big money can do that. Guys, this is, why do I know that? Because that's what I used to do. This used to be me in the ES. I'd put like 2,000 here, right? I mean, it wouldn't be this far away from it, but, you know, it would be like right here and it would come down and I would even sell a couple just to see how the market reacted, right? If, if you ever read that book, Reminiscences of a Stock Operator, there's, it's probably the best book ever written on trading and it was written 120 years ago. He would do the same, like he would do the same thing with stocks, right? Like he, he would sell some to see how the market would react, right? So say I would like, we come down here and I'd sell, you know, I could trade at that, at that point in my career, I could trade 3,000 mini S&Ps, right? So I'd, I'd sell like 100, see what happens. Does the market like panic and start to sell off? No, it like would hold. I'm like, hmm, sell another hundred. Wouldn't do anything and actually bid up. I'm like, okay. Now what I would do, then I would start oh, buying. United Spurt sells ES 200 contract. Hey, look where we're going, by the way. Then I would start buying and then I would see it kind of click up. I'm like, okay. Then I would just start like railing into it, like buying furiously. People would jump on my coattails and it would push it right into my 2000 lot and I would be out of my trade. That's what's happening all day, all day in every market, guys. And if you don't, if you don't think that's what's happening, you're incorrect. What do you think my setups are based off of? My setups are my, in, my, in my course. They're based off of my trading experience as a large trader and how I used to react, how other people used to react when, when they be when I knew I had them caught because it was like a poker game back then. You can see who you were trading against. You can see your counterparty, and I would see how people would react. That's what the setups are based off of. They're not hypothetical things, right? So the point is, is, it's all a big game, but if you know what the game is, you can play the game in the same direction and ride their coattails. Going straight here, and you can hear this tick strike fire. Sorry, nice. it sells, yes. 206 contracts. Oh, this, is so, this is just so annoying. It's very sad. Very, very sad. Two monster trades I should have on right now. ES long. And so I mean, long, and I don't have hey, either one. Hey, Scott, I was, you know, I, I was going to mention this, um, or wanted to mention this. Like, I mean, like, like last week's webinar, uh, you didn't really focus too much on education. You just were focusing on execution. Uh, you know, uh, if you want to do that, and, and I don't want you to miss trades, uh, because then you won't do this. You won't come in here. Uh, so uh, if you want to focus just on execution, <laughs> and like, you know, you can just kind of, uh, I don't know, um, talk about, yeah, ATR, I've, I've got it in this webinar here. If you want to watch the webinar, learn about it, and then we're coming in here for execution. That's totally, I would, it would be even preferable uh, because watching you execute is a treat. Uh, we don't get that. Uh, I've never really seen that. Uh, and, you know, I've been trading a long time. So I, I would love to see that. Uh, I think we'd get a lot more out of it and you might be a lot happier yourself. So it's yeah, a consider I mean, consideration. Yeah, that's really, all. Yeah, I mean, I, listen, I'm, I'm I understand my trading is first and foremost, but most of the time I could teach while I'm trading, right? And then talk through. The problem was this morning when we got on, everything was everything was firing off at one time. You know, I'm, you know, I was trying to draw a zone, so I missed this long. I missed a soybean, and that's it's just the way it is. I mean, sometimes even when I'm trading on my own, I don't catch everything, right? But it, you know, again, if I have a problem with it, then I'll just I'll just trade. Like it's not. I just at the, when we started the webinar, that's when all those events occurred where I should have been long off. Of. Yeah, it, it, it is what it is. I, I really prefer to. I'm do just that. doing my usual complaining. That's all. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I, I mean, I I really prefer that because like like just watching you last week in that webinar was was awesome. Uh, and uh, guys, it, there's recorded. It's up on our streaming YouTube uh, channel. There, you'll see it. Um, but uh, uh, very, very insightful that there's only a, I mean, you just don't see that kind of activity. Like you, there's not many traders that do that. Uh, so um, yeah, 
uh, consider that like uh, moving forward, just uh, you know, flow of con uh, stream of conscious. Uh, and this and just like going through your your execution i'm doing this i'm doing that i'm looking over here i got this okay i got that move my stop etc up to you whatever you're comfortable with it's a, a an alternative if you like to do that yeah, i mean again i've done hundreds of these for you guys it's not that's not the issue i, I can talk and or what is it walk and chew gum at the same time it's just right when we hopped on and we were having a problem with the volume and everything else it's just I, everything went off at one time so i just missed those trades it is what it is but it doesn't mean i can't complain about it so this was uh so the top of this zone was 58 quarter atr right now is uh 3.16 we're above let's see what our lugs look like i don't even know if we're above the yellow lug yet gotta be close Yeah, definitely. So, technically, I should already be long this setup. I said, let me put this on. I just, it's a little scary after we've done this kind of move, but it, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter what you think should happen and what matters what the market market's doing. And if you don't think this market could go straight here, you're, you're sadly mistaken, right? And this, this would be my target if I get long this setup. So, I would already be long. So I'm going to put in along here if it comes back now. I'm not just going to jump in right here, but if this pops off of this zone, I'm going to hop in. So, and 3.16 is the ATR. You can go to your up later. 3.7. So when that points out of this zone, I will go along, will go along this market. Four should be good. This, this zone is of only two points. Two and a half, that's five points. And I'm going to risk a couple points below there, so I can definitely put on, actually I could put on six my full size so two and a half points above here 58 quarter uh 60 75 is my entry actually we never got oh, was that right 58 yeah so we, we actually never even got there I, I so i would not even be in this trade yet so so if it comes back up there i'll fill in my expectation unless i see an opposing and i'll sit in the thing too that's the other problem traders have they can't sit in trades they they get a little profit and they peel out because they don't they don't want to see this right guys you're going to get this all the time it's especially with algos running the show it's called rotation it's called algos taking your money they know most traders can't sit through this and you you puke it out and you trail your stop and you get out and then you watch it do that and you're like stewing for the rest of the day that you took three cents out of a market that won 30 right so as long as nothing, so I will get long this soybean setup as long, you know, if this moves back up there, as long as nothing comes in bearish, I'm holding it. And that's my expectation. And that's what you have to do if you want to make it as a trader. If you can't do that, you need to work on it. And if you continue to take two cents out of your winners, three cents out of your winners, two points, three points, and you're risking three, five, eight, you're, you're, you're just do the room a favor, PayPal everybody in the room your trading account and go find something else to do because you're not going to make it period it's not going to happen that was part of a joke but the whole thing was not a joke that's 100 percent. i say it every time you got to there's just these core rules that you have to follow if you want to make it right and we've talked about pretty much the main ones today already all right i'm still waiting for a retest of the zone you know if something else comes in then i'll short it on that but How this is just doing nothing now so we'll that. I think I missed a crew trade as well. Hold on. Oh, oh, here. The, uh, right to the hey, look at that. Look what we're tagging. You guys believe that? How did I know that was going to happen? Oh, I, because they make it happen. <laughs> That's how. Big money will get the market to their orders almost every time. So what did I, I can't remember what I was looking at here now. Is this the, uh, no, that was a 123. Uh, Scott, um, just there's some confusion. Well, I was going to go long here. I mean, this violated, so this is that zone's done. So I was going to go long here, remember, when this this did this, I was going to go long, and it just went right through the zone. Well, we want a full ATR below the zone, so this volume event is done. I'm just going to clear out the zone, these zones in here. Go ahead, Bruce, sorry. No, no, uh, there's just some confusion on that uh, Ludwig uh, webinar, the link that you gave us. Uh, so it happens at the end. It's someone else explaining it, I believe, um, at the one hour and 11 mark in, during the webinar. Is that correct? 
someone else explaining what the, the link to the webinar that you gave us uh, for Ludwig levels yeah um, yeah it's just her the one that I and I'll put it back in the room right now but the one the one with her and I is just her and I Oh, okay. Just talking back and forth the whole time. Okay, so uh, there was yeah. another one with one of, one of the traders. Yeah, this um, Gary. That somebody. I personally didn't. Pardon me. Yeah, this Gary guy. That's the link that we have, or at least. Um, yeah. So if you can, oh, if no, you can I, put the, put the this other one. yeah, put the other one in into the chat, that'd be great. Yeah, the, the one with the one with Gary. I mean, he you know he claims he makes money and he has his own. He's not using book maps, so right there, I even tell him like you you're not you don't have all the information like I say every time. That one wasn't, I thought that was going to be really informative and it really wasn't like it was, oh, okay. you know, it is what okay. it is. I, I had him on and you know, I didn't get that much out of it, but you know, you get to see how another trader operates. So yeah. again, it is what it is, but I'm going to put in here and let's see if I can figure out this room. Voice channel. Just don't miss a trade. <laughs> Why you don't want to hear me complain? Yeah, um, that, and see. I want to watch you too. <laughs> <laughs> All right, tell me if this comes through the, uh, hold on. Tell me if that came in the right room. This comp. Yeah. Yeah. Th maker. This one, this one looks right. Yeah. This is it. Thanks. That's thanks, Scott. That is the one that's going to change your trading life. Gotcha. Watch that. It's literally me. Right. It was like literally a week after I started using the Ludwig levels. And I, my questions were awesome, like very basic, very basic explanation, but they were so powerful. And then I go over the next seven months and I didn't really do anything with it. It is what it is. Again, I've said that like 20 times a day, but again, the beginning, middle, middle of January, I, I, I rewatched it. I don't even know what spurred me to rewatch it. I'm like, what am I doing? Like, I'm not using these things anywhere near what they are, you know, how, how they are, you know, how, for how powerful they are. I was just using them for target support and resistance at the blue and red lock. When you, you can, when you, you know, watch the video and you're going to see, she's, you know, she starts out by saying, if I remember correctly, um, you know, we, we should have gotten to a log. We should have tagged the red log and now we're, it didn't. Now we're back below yellow expectations blue. So again, something that should have happened and didn't happen. I mean, it is a really, really good webinar and it's very basic. Again, my trading is nothing. There's nothing very, you know, high, high tech about it, right? It's just it's common sense. And again, and then I'm, that's how I make money. Like the dumb, the the simpler. I don't want to say dumber. The simpler you can make your trading, the better you're going to do. The more crap you have on your screen, the worse you're going to do because you can't make decisions. And even when you're in a trade, then you're, you know, you have a counter, you're like, you have a, you're on a counter area. You're like, oh, well, this is a, this looks like a short area here. I, I don't know. I, I need to get out, right? I have very few things I use in my trading. We'll go over them quickly. Obviously, book map, SI indicator, number one by far. Even, even she admits in the video that you cannot trade these level, this, these things in a vacuum. You, you've got to have, you know, other other things that you look at to help you make better decisions, right? Because again, how are you gonna so okay, we got it we got above the yellow here, expectations rest. So I just go along here and 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 then risk all the way down. Like you can see what I'm saying, you need more, and that's what the volume helps you do, right? So Ludwig levels, well, number one book map, Ludwig levels. What else do I use? I will look at VWAP. Obviously, everyone looks at VWAP, standard deviation to VWAP, very powerful, especially when you can put them at a at a Ludwig level. Like if we were to rip up here and we get to the yellow lug and we're at three standard deviation, for, that's all these bands are. So this is called the daily value area. This is one standard deviation from VWAP, one and a half, two, and you can even put more on here. So that would be, so say we just pop up here right now, that would be three standard deviations from VWAP at a yellow lug. That is, and then you get a volume signal. That's like a gift. Like you're, you're, it's going, it's not. Going, it's not going to do that. Very, like I would bet huge money, right? Ninety-nine percent of the time, it'll it'll react off, off there to the downside if your volume signal is bearish. So I'll use VWAP, um, book map, low book levels, VWAP, and then what else do I look at? I look at market profile, right? And composite value areas. Composite value areas are when days merge. Um, let's find you a good example here. This is one of the reasons I was looking at along and. NASDAQ earlier too. Let's see. No, 
was crude, I think. Yeah. So this was, so this is how I do this, right? This is a huge composite value area. Look how perfect this looks, right? Now watch when I separate the days. Look at that. Look how many, so the way you merge them is if, so here's like the first day this started, right? So if the next day, the value area, at least 50% of this value area, which is 70% of the trade occurred in that day, is inside the prior area, and then you merge it. And that's a composite. That'd be a two-day composite. This is like a five-day, so it's even more powerful. Uh, so you merge that. So sorry, that. Scott. Um, just uh, want to, uh, uh, user saying, uh, you know, ES is retracing a bit to the 4520. Maybe there's a chance to still go long. Um, as we enter the European close. So I uh, just wanted to get that out since it's uh, uh, we got some eyes on other markets here. Yeah, that's fine. I mean, you'll hear when a volume event goes off, I don't trade unless I get a volume event. So I don't care what's closing, what's opening, what the news is. If I don't get a volume event, then I just sit there and, and I wait. So bottom line is this is why this is a major, major value area right in line with balance area it's the same thing right it's just looking at it a different way what are we doing we're busting out of it remember what i said how we whoops i already did this so this is today's trade all right well, what did we do yesterday we just talked about this a little bit ago we pulled back tried to break out yesterday pulled back held the high volume node now we're ripping this looks like it's going to 100 dollars, basically what do you see here same thing right? Pull back the expectation when this thing is in in, a, in the value area because it got out of here overnight. I think is to get back to the bottom. Well, that's telling just like the Ludwig levels. What didn't happen gives you a heads up something's wrong. It didn't get down here, and then now we just launched out of here. This thing's going much higher, or it should. If something happens and it gets back inside this value area, then you're like, hmm, that's not right. Okay, I'm looking to go short. But right now, I'm looking for longs. Right of the yellow lug breaking out of this. We held that high volume note. Any long signals, I will go long, and that's my first target. All right, let's uh, see what's going on here. Where is my... All right, so I'm going to delete this. Why? This was the latest volume event. Right? We just got an ATR below there. So now what am I looking to do? So I was going to go long, but what, what should have happened? We should not have had a bearish setup. So that's telling me, okay, this move is probably over. Now I'm willing to short it, right? So we came up here, here's the event. This should have held, but then that, why, why did that not hold? We're still above the yellow, so I'll wait for retest failure of that setup. But again, I was thinking this should happen until I was proven otherwise. Bearish setup. Here's your ATR. If we retest fail, I'm going to go short. See, we're just retesting this first zone, this major zone. And I, it's almost, I would say, 100% that we're going to bounce off here and at least retest this. But I will go short. If this goes like this and goes right through here, well, I'm not going to go short. I need to see retest of the bottom of the zone or, or the zone. Failure, then I'll go short. So now I'm in short watch. See how quickly I, I switched? I had a buy order in there and I switched to actually going short. All right, let's see what I'm missing here in gold. There's some real screw traders in this thing. All these guys that piled in on those cells. How's that working out? Um, so we had this stop run here. And again, they just look how, look how perfectly they, it's every time. This is, again, I missed this one too, but this, look at this. It's just, guys, this is, this is it. See how we tested this exact top of the zone? Go on. Been long that too. Yep, I actually would have been long that aggressively because we're above the yellow log and this is the target. So I would have been long this. Three quarters in ATR, no ATR is 24, right around 15 ticks-ish. That would have been long. 
the setup as the stop run. This is called a stop and hold. So this is what I'm talking about. NASDAQ, we saw a dumb and dumber. We saw the stop run puke and there was no big money to push it and it failed. This one is a call to stop and hold. One of my six subs, now we have a sixth one called Step Brothers, where this was a stop run and it helped. I would have been in three quarters in ATR and you even got the retest failure. That's even better. This thing's going straight to that red lug. Unless something bearish comes in in the volume. If not, you sit through this trade and watch it go right to the red lug and, and potentially higher. So crude, at least I'm not, I mean, I knew we were going to tag this liquidity, but there was no setup, right? There was a, there was a setup here, but then we got an ATR below here. I just deleted the zone. I was going to get long and then I canceled it and there was just nothing here to get long. So, sometimes that happens. That's why you want multiple markets. If one market sucks or you miss a trade, then you, you key on another market. Yeah, because that's upsetting me too. Keep this here just so I can get waterboarded. I call these things waterboarding because you like tags, you have all your senses, especially when you're losing. You get to watch it and you get to hear it. It's not fun. I, I always say in my room, waterboarding can't, can't be much worse than watching and listening to the to the pain. All right, so let's just check out these lugs. You always want to just keep an eye on these to you know to see what's happening, what shouldn't happen, what didn't happen. Um, this was a prior uh this was a prior composite you can see we failed out of that and now we're back in here so it'll be interesting if it holds or fails again i don't know why that's blue so we're still below the yellow lug nothing really happened it's just bouncing around daily value area daily value area again is one standard deviation from vweb i still think we're going to do that by the end of the day because of that right there so i would love a short signal how about a rip up here at these spot gamma levels get a short signal that would be right at, near that yellow lug and then watch it just get pummeled into the close right that would be right here 4575 is the yellow lug where are these spot gamma levels a little above there This would just be, this would be glorious. You can get up here, run up here, get a short signal, and then hit this at the close. That's what I think is going to happen. So we'll see. It doesn't mean I just throw in a short right now. I need to see a volume setup, a bearish volume setup, then I'll go short. All right. Um, so beans did not retest that zone yet i will go short on this black zone if it retest fails if not i'm still i'm looking for a new setup nothing's firing off let's look and see if anything happened in natural gas this thing's been nutty lately yep what do you see here you can use 150 200 in natural gas 200 is probably safer and what's this 200 right Let's just hypo hypothetically draw this and say what we would have done, right? Make sure you incorporate all the prices in the spike. NQ stock stock by NQ, 171 contracts. Come back there and let's go real time. See if we can put on a trade. I haven't even put on a trade yet. <laughs> How's that live trading webinar going? All right, so yeah, that's 144. That was close. You had four, 490 swipes. Sweeps, this means 170. Can definitely draw that because there hasn't been basically anything today, right? So, we could talk about all the time. You got to judge, right? My threshold's 150, but if you see 200, 300, 200, 300, don't be using 150 for the day. Up your up your threshold for the day. This is definitely enough because this is all we've seen, and this is like we haven't had any signals in here since we've been waiting for the retest of that zone. So I was waiting for a retest of this zone to get short. Well, now here's a new volume event, right? So there's the zone. What's the next step? Check out the lugs. We're still above the yellow. And where do we hold, right? This is still bullish. I was willing to go short because there was a bear sub, but now we had a new event. So I'll still go long. Why? Well, we drew new lugs. We should have held prior red, yellow, and headed down. Didn't, held yellow, held yellow, now we're back here. If this turns into a bullish event, that's my target. 
but I do know that there's liquidity all below here too. So it doesn't mean I won't go long though, right? Like I keep that in the back of my mind, especially if I get short, then I'll use those as targets. But it doesn't mean I won't go long right now. It doesn't mean it has to happen right now, right? The, the travel to the liquidity. So once again, why is this failing? Why is there a stop run and paper doesn't come up? And like we just saw in gold, why are they not just stepping in and pushing this higher? Yeah, and then we get ATR, retest fail. I'll go short this zone now. This is now out of, this, this setup is now done. I was going to go short off of this zone because we have a new occurrence. Right? So, what's the next step? Find your ATR. Where's my chart? Forty two. Forty two point one three. And we go to the handy dandy. Recording ATR. Thirty one point five nine. So that's thirty say thirty two. So, just because we're above the yellow lug, I have to wait for full ATR retest failure. So full 42 points retest failure. I'll get it. I'll get short at 31 points, and then my stop goes 31 points above that zone. So the bottom of the zone is 97.50. I need to see 58. 57.50. Six fifty. <clears throat> that would be forty one points below here. Right? Or if this doesn't go full ATR and gets three quarters of an ATR above here, I will go long aggressively. Why? Because we're above the yellow lug. So that would be what did I say, thirty thirty one points. Thirty one point five nine, so I'll just say thirty two. That puts me at 37.75. That's where I will belong this market. So this is an example of that's my standard how I trade these, right? But you see this zone. I don't want to. I don't want to go long right in the middle of this zone and right at a spot gain level. So I will push it up just a few points. You know, it's eight points. It's nothing in here. Just above there. So instead of 37, I'll go. I'll get long at 45, right? Because I don't want to. I don't want to fill right in the middle of a zone that could reject. Especially with the spot gamma level or so. If it gets up to here, then I'll go long. Aggressive, this is my aggressive entry. I still think this is going to sell off, so we'll see. And I think something, it doesn't mean anything, right? It's like, I mean, yeah, I have experience and I think something should happen, but I don't just sit there and keep shorting this. If, if this turns into a bullish signal, I'm not shorting just because I think something should happen. This is telling me, okay, it's not ready to sell off yet, so I'll go long. So we wait for that. <clears throat> see, I can kind of see these texts. And it's giving me a headache trying to scroll back. Any questions, Bruce? Uh, no, no. I think I've answered the questions here. So here's another thing you want to keep an eye on too, right? This has been the last three days and it has been pathetic. And that's why I didn't even do a PM webinar yesterday in my room because you're just asking for trouble, right? So when you look at this, this is Sierra chart. There's other platforms that have the same thing, obviously. You look at relative volume, right? So you want to keep an eye on. So what this is showing you down here is the volume based on this exact five minute period. So like right now is 1020 central. So this is telling you is the volume normal for the last as it's been the last 30 days, right? And you can see this volume is getting pathetic again. And I'll show you some examples here how sad this has been. So this is, I mean, NASDAQ looks the same. So you can see we had some spikes in volume right at the open. This is where you got that move up where I missed the trade, missed the long, right? There was some good volume. And when you get good volume, Whatever way this break, you could draw zones based on this stuff, right? Because this is where there's committed traders. So see where that started. Started right about here. And it came 
down and right there. So you can see we tried to break down under there. Obviously, there were some aggressive sellers or it wouldn't have gone down, right? But guess what? There were responsive buyers willing to take those orders. Doesn't mean you just hop in long or short, you wait, just like we do with the zones, right? You can use this the exact same, it's the same principle, right? Whatever way this breaks is going to be probably the first big move, right? So this would have broken lower. All these responsive buyers that bought here, puke them out. If it breaks higher, all these sellers that were aggressive, puke them out. So that's really good to watch just for that aspect. But when you want to watch this is when you start seeing this thing you get to like literally the last three days, it's been like even into the afternoon, 50%, 40%, 60%. It's like you do not want to be trading in a market with 40% normal volume because you will get algoed to death. My exact phrase yesterday was, not doing a PM webinar, and then I said a little because you're just opening yourself up to bad trade. So, you know, if I don't have the trading room, there's not even a question. I look at that volume, like I'm going to hit some golf balls. I'm not going to sit here and be algo to death. But I said it was algorithmic because when you see this, it's, it would behoove you to get away from the screens for a while. So you can see, let's, I mean, we'll even look at it in the last couple of days. And, and if you've been struggling the last couple of days, getting chopped up, that's the reason. Like I haven't done well the last couple of days because. There's no follow through because there's no volume. There's no volume, it's just gonna chop, right? You got algos just whipping it back and forth. The only time it follows through is when there's big volume coming in. This was, this was yesterday. But look, look at this, look at the, if you got chopped up yesterday, look, here's why. Look at this volume. This is like 30%. Wow, look at that. I wonder why it did that. <laughs> oh yeah, of course, when the, or was this two days ago? I think this was two days ago. This was yesterday. This was 2-1. This was um, Tuesday. And when the market closes, then, it, then then you get volume coming in. Joke. And then yesterday, same stuff. I'll show you what I saw when I said, yeah, I'm not trading this, guys. Sorry. And nothing, literally nothing happened. Right at the close, it happened, and that's when I shorted that NASDAQ. Let's see here. Look, look at this. So if you're losing last couple of days, you don't start changing your trading style. You can come back and say, well, wait a minute. This was, yeah, that's not what you're looking for. Right? And try to break out and just got chopped up again. And then, oh, of course, here's the close. Here's a huge volume, the earnings. We got a report yesterday, there's a couple of them. And then you get the big volume and then you get the extended move. This is a perfect example. When you have algos and no volume, you get chopped to pieces. When you have big volume, you get trending markets. Right? So you could even say, I'm not gonna participate in a market unless I see at least, well, definitely at least one times normal with 100%, which is just normal, at least two two or three times, and then, then I'll participate. You would do so much better and you wouldn't get elbow to death, trust me. So same situation here. See that? And then you see that. That's why that's happening. Is your algos running you back and forth, right? Running traders back and forth, racket. No paper, no, no big money in here yet. If you start, and what this is great too, if you see this, right, it's just doing this, this, all of a sudden it happens all the time and it'll be right in the middle of a balance area. It'll, it'll look like it's just doing this and all of a sudden you'll see like one of these. You'll be like, hmm. And then lo and behold, within five, 10 minutes, you get your big move. It's, it's uncanny. You guys got to have this up as well. And if you see this, get up off the screens, come back in the afternoon. I used to literally, when I was scalping, I used to go home. I lived right, you know, this is downtown Chicago. I used to, because I got beat up so many times after 1030, from 1030 to 1230, 1231 o'clock. I'm just like, you know what? I'm not trading. Oh, my God. Did I, no, I didn't miss this. Okay. I mean, I missed it, but I didn't miss it. Remember, I wanted to wait for ATR retest failure. It just didn't retest. Don't worry. There will be another signal, and we're... Like I said, I have been, we're going in this liquidity by the end of the day. So this is now invalidated as a long setup, right? I was willing to take this three quarters in ATR. But we just got a full ATR below here. Now this is a short setup. This is canceled. So once again, now you've seen it twice. This is information for you for the rest of the day. Two different times you have had buy stop runs. The other one was over here. That failed. There's another one. 
So if, where's the big money at? If, so, if the big money wants to buy, why are they not jumping on the coattails of these stop runs? Something's up. Something's up, and you see where the big money is. Down here waiting for their fills. All the way down here. So get ready. That's the second occurrence. Right? Doesn't mean you just jump in a short, but you put that in the back of your mind. Like, oh, okay, interesting. Low volume, first and foremost. Two stop runs. No one pushed it up higher. I know paper's below. Now you're like, now you're like, we say it all the time, you're like a sniper, right? You're just sitting there waiting, waiting, waiting. You get your, I mean, this could be it right here. If this retest fails, I'll go short. But say if something else happens and we get below the yellow lug where you can get short aggressively, boom, and you're waiting for that. Who wants to bet me we get down here today? At least this first band of liquidity. I'll bet someone around the golf. Next time you come to Arizona. We've done this before and I win every time I make this bet. So think wisely before you, before you place the wager. I am betting you at some point today, I should say after the close too, because the earnings are coming in and they, they probably know what the earnings are. I know that would never happen. Um, I will, I'll even say, I won't even use after the close. I will say regular trading hours. I will bet somebody, if you want to bet a round of golf, that we tag at least this this one. It's, it's, pretty, it's 200 points away. Someone better take me up on it. I say we tag that before, let's make this fair. So let's look at the red lug. Gold ice TC. 151 contracts. Red lugs up here. So that's about 200, it's a little more than 200 points. But I will bet you we go and tag that liquidity down here. Or is it 14.5? Before we get to this target here. I won't even go red lug, I'll go this target, this orange thing. Who wants to bet? Round of golf. And I will find you. If you make the bet and lose, I will come to your home state and drag you to Arizona to pay for my golf. Let me know. Let me know if there's any bets, Bruce. All right, gold just uh, new occurrence. No takers. No takers. <laughs> no takers. Guys are learning their lesson. What was that one dude? I can't remember his name. There was someone, the someone who took it uh, like a year ago when you said something like this. Oh, this happened. Not this was like a few months ago. The guy took it and we hit it before I even got off the webinar. <laughs> <laughs> or we were like right when I was getting off, we hit it. All right, so this is not. Uh, this is not threshold and goal. Maybe you get two different amounts here. Let's see. This is 86. And this is 103. In the same area. You can draw this on. Yeah. See, this was great. About another incredible edge. This was one house. I got filled on partial, and then it got the rest off. 200 by ice right here. That's one entity. That's good information, is it not? Do people staring at bar charts know that? They sure don't. Let's get this. In here, the zone. That. Next thing is where are we on the lugs? I'm above the yellow, I know that. Let's see how close we are to the blue. I mean, the red. So, this is the issue, right? I will not go along this setup because we're so close and I know how powerful these are, right? So I would wait, you know, this could easily draw new lugs, right? Like this drew it to the downside, but I will wait for it to draw new lugs and then wait for my bullish setup. I'm not gonna go long right before the red lug. It's not gonna happen. And actually, if this if this setup fails on the downside, I will go short because we're so close to that lug. It's the only time I'm aggressive above the yellow lug on shorts is if it's right at the red lug. Are pretty close right so this could easily stay within this atr tag the right we just tag the red lug right there right so now what i'm going to do if this this could continue higher but if this turns around what am i doing here it sells three quarters in atr below here i'm going to short it I'm aggressively shorting it because we're at the red lug the red lug is right here here's your volume setup it should push through and build new lugs if it doesn't it's telling me something's up i'll go short atr 22 .3, 22 .6. 22 .6. 17 ticks below there. So we get 17 ticks below here. I'm shorting this market. 
4347 is where I will short this mark. If this holds and rips up, well, then we're most likely going to build new logs and then I'll look for longs. Look for long setups on the buy. That's it. That's my trick. Um. Scott, any any Good reason? Question. Yeah, any reason for the the five minute ATRs compared to like maybe fifteen minutes or uh, why? why uh, I just that? I just because the longer time you go, the bigger the the bigger the ATR, right? So it's like don't use one minute that's too close to one or two minutes. I mean, this is or the, you know that's too you know uh, small of a time frame in my opinion. I just this is just the best time frame for day traders is my in my opinion. I mean, you look at the difference. So. Eight, eight, eight points for the five minute. If I go hourly, it's twenty. It's twenty six points, which is actually isn't even bad. I mean, we had five minute at twenty six points just last week. But you know, the longer you go out, the bigger you have to. You know, the bigger time. We're day traders, right? I, you know, I'm, I'm looking for. You know, I don't want to be risking 50, 60 points on trades, and, and this just captures the, the five minute captures the shorter time frame volatility. Right, and we're day traders, so that's why I use five minute. You may say I like two minute. You may say I like fifteen minute. Again, this is how I trade it, and this is default. Like I haven't changed anything. This is the Wilders. You can Google what Wilders is. This I didn't change this either. This is looking back 14, 14 five minute periods. Right, I haven't changed anything. I, I don't. I don't need to change anything. Right, you get all these traders that like try to tweak everything and. It's like, I don't need that. I just need the basic information. I make it as simple as possible, and then I trade. Right? Don't be concerned. Like, I had one guy in my room, like, the guy was just, a, you know, I don't like to bash traders, but the guy just couldn't get it, man. I had, I had, like, a mentoring session with him, too, and he just was like, so, well, what about doing a um, uh, – moving average on the ATR times blah, blah, blah. It's like, dude, you don't need to do all that. Like, just, just uh, the simpler you can make this, the better you're going to do. Like, he just was so detailed. Like, well, what if you look at the ATR over a, you know, 40 day period, and then you take this, with this moving average, it's like, <laughs> guy, just take the five minute ATR, take your volume setups and trade that that's what you need to do. And the guy didn't make it. That's again, the more complicated you make your trading, the worse you're going to do. This is all you need. Again, this is all you need. Period. You can still make money trading these setups. You can add one more thing. You know that's really powerful. Again, I use Ludwig levels. It's nothing more powerful that I've seen. But if you like using VWAP or you know Bollinger Bands or whatever you want to use, just make sure you don't have 55 things on the chart. That's it. If you use one thing and volume, great. You still have an edge, right? If you have an edge just with the volume, you can add one more thing in, like VWAP or whatever. I happen to use these because, again, the guy that showed me these told me for eight months how ridiculously powerful they were. I'm like, yeah, whatever, whatever, whatever. Then he sends me, a, I mentored him a few times, like on the book map stuff. And then he sends me a text, last, was it last, yeah, it was like last March or last February. He's like, yeah, I'm, I'm killing it now. I made one point five. I'm up, I'm up one point two million dollars in the last two months trading trading these Ludwig levels with the with the uh, bookmap volume. I'm like, hmm, that got my interest. And then I talked to him and he explained it to me. And I'm like, okay, I'll watch him. And then that was you know back in. It literally took me eight months to even put these on my on my chart. And then I, I started watching. I'm like, interesting. Then I got on that webinar that I just posted with Pamela Ludwig, who helped explain it to me. And I still wasn't using them. Seven hundred forty-five contracts. I still wasn't using it to full effect. And again, watch the webinar and you'll see what I mean. And then now, now it's starting to really, everything's starting to really click using those things. So, again, go to her website. She has a three-day free trial. Tell her you saw the book map webinar using them. She'll have something for you, like add a product, a free product or something, because I think you get four products. Um, members of my room get six, and, and grand, grandfather pricing. So there, there's a perks to you know. Just say you saw it on the webinar is what I'm saying. Um, but if you don't, if you think they don't work, then don't use them. Use something else. But I can tell you the number one thing, if you're not using it, then you're you're not getting all the information is the volume. 
All right, so let's just do this last zone. I was going to hop off, and every time I go to get off these webinars, something happens every single time. Just just a quick quick note for everybody. I, I'm uh, Scott. Uh, there, there there is a, uh, a Scott Pulsini room, a uh, text room hashtag Scott dash Pulsini here in in our uh, the Bookmap Discord uh, chat room. Uh, you can find the Lud Ludwig. Uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna list it there as well. This uh, webinar. All right. So just so if you guys need the resource, it's there. All right. So I, I'm, I see the chat right now. But Ludwig level is very expensive. It's like a hunt. What does she charge? Like 150 bucks a month or something for four markets. Well, this is what I tell you guys all the time. Like when we're talking about global um, global versus global plus and book map and all all you get for global plus. For extra 40 bucks a month and again i'm not selling anything right i'm not even selling level levels if you don't want to use them don't use them if you i'm all for saving every dollar you can on stuff like that's why i use think or swim this is nothing you put in some money in think or swim pull it out you can have access to all this wherever you wherever i can cut costs i've learned over the years to cut costs but if you're bemoaning using you know paying for level levels or global plus something that is so powerful in your trading for you know 150 bucks a month or 40 bucks a month, well, then you shouldn't be trading as it is, right? That means you don't have the funds to be trading right now. So that's how you have to look at it. Like, I'm all for cutting costs, but when we're talking about the power of these things, or what you can, what, what is 150 bucks, a point and a half on, or two points on a, on a one lot? I mean, it's like, you gotta just, you know, put things in perspective is what I'm saying. And if you don't want to, if you don't want to spend the money, then don't spend the money. Then trade the trade book map by itself. You can make money doing that. But again, if you're complaining about nickels and dimes in the grand scheme of things, you shouldn't be trading anyway. Right. And I'm all for cutting costs. All right. So this is the um, latest setup. ATR is still elevated. We're at uh, 8.07. So I'm going to do this one, then I'm hop off. My head's starting to hurt, and I'm going golfing today so I can get away from these markets, especially after the last few days. And then trade uh, 6.05 is the uh, ATR, so we'll say six and a quarter, or three quarters of an ATR. All right, so I already know we're below the yellow lug, right? But we'll take one more look at this. We're below the yellow lug. We know all this liquidity is down there. I have a very educated guess. This is where we're headed based on that liquidity as well. And we should anyway, based on the Lug, Ludwig setups, right? So what am I gonna do here? I'm going to short this six and a quarter points, which is three quarters in ATR. That's the aggressive entry. So I will go short this at 08 quarter. And that'd be good too, because I'm below, all right, maybe not. No, that's right in the middle of that zone, but that's fine. I'm not gonna move it all the way down to 04 quarter. Like if it was a good point or two, then I would. I'd put it below the zone. This is where I'm getting that net trade if it breaks. That's three quarters in ATR, and I'm being aggressive. I'm not waiting for full ATR retest failure because we're below the yellow lug, right? Once again, no one wants to bet. I bet you that's where we're at. <clears throat> if not lower. I think we're coming. I think we'll fall both these today, so we'll see. If this turns into... So what do I need to see on the, on the bullish side? Well, I need to see full ATR, eight points. Retest failure, six points, then I'll go long. Because you shouldn't see a bullish setup right now. You should only be seeing bearish setups. If something bullish comes in, it just tells you it's not ready for a sell-off. It doesn't, we can still pop all the way back up here. Okay. Hopefully that is clear. I've said it about 40 times today. Um, let's see, we're right at daily value area low. So it could definitely just bounce from here too, but if this gets below here, I think this is where we're at. That blue lug is 86.50. And that liquidity, hey, look at that. We're right at the same area. That's my expectation if we... So say we start to sell off, say I get short, and we hit this and we struggle, well, I'll get out of a couple. If it can't just plow right through this liquidity and I see, so I see red, 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 say it takes it out, red bubble, red bubble, red bubble, and then it pops back above, well, I'll get out. I'll take like one or two off. That's that's a reason to get out, not because you you, you like your P and L. Right? Use reasons to get out as your targets and not your P and L. All right, so I'm set up for that. Uh, I'm set up to short gold as long as it doesn't get an ATR above here. And then I think I was going to do something with soybeans. I was going to short it. I don't think I have an order in there though. 
Tops and Peace Tops Top Sell ES 526 Compress. Shocking. It's just going to get off first. Just gonna, about to get off the webinar. And every time I think I'm out, they pull me back in. Movie. That's, yeah, the exact movie, too. Uh, exact. Yep. Yeah. Uh, part two of uh, The Godfather. Wrong. Damn. Part one. Godfather three. Three. Part three. When uh, he tried to get out. Michael Corleone wanted to get I out. I thought of you the... said you hated huh. part three. I did. Doesn't mean I can't quote it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. So this was, uh, this is threshold. So I got to draw this. Draw this zone. So this was not threshold ice. It was only 277. So let's just draw the stop run. And that's what's great about the sweeps. Again, you get that in global plus. That's worth its weight right there. Worth the cost, in my opinion. Didn't just get these sweeps. Um, so you got the stop run right there. So what I should do here is change my stop, my sell stop, to three quarters of an ATR below this zone. It's pretty close. Okay, so that would be six points below here. That would be 650. I'll just leave this where it's at based on this first one. Right. Again, that's not really following my exact rules because this is the newest setup, right? But I'm only, I, I, again, I don't want to miss this move down. I wouldn't miss it, but it's going to cost me a few more points. So I'll just get in here. But if you're going by the newest zone, which you should be, especially if you're just learning this stuff, then you should be six points below this zone as the aggressive entry, which puts you at 06 versus 08, two points. Here, I'll just I'll follow my rules here. Because then I can't complain if it pops up. And then, then I'll say, well, I should have just done this. There we go. So that's based on this new setup. If this fills, I go three quarters in ATR above this zone. Right? So then I go... I'm sorry, no, it's, yeah, six points. So then I stop at 21. If both these hold, what do I need to see? So this could be a dumb and dumber, right? Dumb, dumb money puke, no follow through. I need to see full ATR, so eight points, eight, eight and a quarter points, retest failure, I'll get in and I'll go along. Again, you should, I have an expectation, a thesis of what should happen here. I think we should sell off based on the level levels and everything we talked about. You shouldn't see a bullish event. If you do, it's just telling you something's up. It's not ready to go yet. And then I'll go along. And I'll look for a move up here and hopefully get a short and then ride it back down. That's day trading, guys. That's what happens. You have to be able to be ready to flip. And that's what the volume allows you to do. If you're just if you're just trading off charts or even Ludwig levels, right? That's why Ludwig levels on their own are not enough in my opinion, right? What are you what are you doing here? You're going short. Okay, so where, where are you stopping? Up here? Oh, good, good luck risking 40 points. Right, or you can stop above here. I mean, that's what the, the volume allows you to do. You can really judge, you know, and you don't have to be risking all the way up here. You risk based on the setups. All right, I'm out of gas. Uh, long week this week with all that crappy trade. I'm golfing and relaxing. Um, I'll, just, I'll watch this for like another minute, see if we go fill that down there. Scott, what percent of the normal SI alerts do you use for your SI alert levels to use? No, yeah, that's part of the course. I've got 21 mark, 22 markets in there. All the thresholds are 22 markets. I'm in the process of making a new course too. You know, I made that course almost two years ago. I mean, it's still relevant. All the thresholds are pretty much right on. Um, but like back then, they didn't have reset mode. They only had exponential, exponential. It's still the same stuff. It's just I want to make a more current one. And, then, you know, you guys that have bought the, the older one, it'll be a deep, deep discount if you get the new one because it's not, it's going to be, it's going to be, yeah, it's going to be some of the same setups, but I added a new setup. And I'm also, I think, going to put in that course. I have a, uh, a webinar I did on uh, the um, actionable zones. So, you know, when you look at my, when you look at my, um, I haven't drawn any recently in crude or anything, but when you look at these, and the stuff from before but you know there's four very important areas in like bar chart trading that you want to pay attention to too so I'm, i think i'm going to throw that in as a bonus but i still got to make it i just been so busy but i definitely want to do that for you guys because i want to be current and then i also want to show current settings right like there's so many new things now with the new with the new um you know, 
uh, now it's called subchart and you know they have all these other things in here uh, but you can see i'm reset mode so i mean you can see these are the thresholds for essays this is literally the same exact same as the course two year year and a half ago or whatever i already made that 500 stop runs 700 ice 10 seconds for stops 60 seconds for ice and you want to make sure this this is the voice stuff is in line with this so you don't want this what guys do all the time it's very easy to do you don't want this to be set at a minute and then you have your stop alert set at 10 seconds and you'll hear the stop alert fire off but then you'll look at your chart and you'll see this huge event and you're like well wait a minute why is that not they this only run off 300 i'm seeing 900 stops well it's because you have this set at a minute you got to make sure this matches this right this is the sub chart this is the voice make sure this stuff matches this stuff as far as the time component <clears throat> we get an ATR above here we did not all right so again I will short this when it as long as we don't get an ATR above this last zone drawn if we do I'll I'll take a retest failure if not I'm shorting this aggressively and I'm going to watch the free fall to the to the waiting hands of the paper that always gets their way all right down here. all right unless there's any other questions I'm over and out yeah sounds good Scott thank you so much um hour and 45 minutes uh, and uh, guys, I'll put this uh, webinar up on the streaming uh, recordings on our YouTube channel if you want to review it. Um, and a uh, bunch of links in here, et cetera, in the chat. So if you also want to review those. So, uh, yeah, thanks, Scott. Yep, thanks for having me. Uh, no trades today. That's actually pretty rare. But hopefully, I mean, I've been talking the whole time. So there's obviously stuff to learn. And that's the whole idea of these webinars anyway. So, um, again, if you want to see live, the live trades, the last couple, last, I, I don't want to jinx it, but I can't remember the last webinar I had in here that actually was a losing webinar or losing day. I literally can't remember it. So go back and watch the last however many you'll see. Even if they're losing days, it doesn't matter. You're going to have losing days. But my point is, there's really good lessons. Like last week, it was like winner in NASDAQ, winner in crude, winner in gold, whatever else I was trading. So go back and watch those prior webinars if you want to see some live trades or come to my trade room. And I do this same thing every day twice a day most days except for thursdays because i go golf in the afternoon so i do an hour webinar at the open and an hour webinar at the close unless it's horrific trade like it was yesterday and then nobody should be trading because you're just giving your money to the algos all right guys i will see you next thursday thanks bruce all right thanks scott have a good weekend you too thanks bye